Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. Today's video is all about sweaters. We discuss the history from the Iron Islands and Guernsey all the way to the different styles like V-neck and crew neck, the materials, the fit, the quality of construction, and everything else you should know about this wonderful wardrobe staple. <laughs> are also known as jumpers in Great Britain and they are a casual wardrobe staple that is wonderful during the colder seasons of the year. It can be made of many materials such as cashmere, wool, cotton, alpaca or blends thereof. Overall you want something that doesn't pill, that lasts you for quite a while, that is soft on the skin, that keeps you warm without making you sweat unnecessarily. You want it to fit properly in the shoulders in terms of shoulder width. You want the sleeve lengths to be exactly the length you want and it shouldn't be too baggy around your midsection or too tight around your bum. Personally, I'm a big fan of classic style sweaters. That means I'm not really fond of zippers. I'd rather go with toggles or buttons. At the same time, I want v-necks and crew necks and shawl collars and we'll discuss all of these styles and when to wear them in today's video. While sweaters are not a formal garment, they're wonderful if you're at home or in a casual environment when you want to be comfortable and when range of movement is essential. Minted sweaters are a lot better than any kind of tailored garment when it comes to range of movement and comfort. So how did sweaters come to exist? If you go back in history and look at the 15th century, you can see that fishermen from the island of Guernsey wore these kind of garments for the first time. They were made of a tightly spun knit wool because that's what they had available and it had to last and keep the fishermen warm, and protected even in the roughest of seas. Eventually, fishermen from outside of Guernsey picked it up and they called them Gansey. Once the Guernsey had been adopted by the Royal British Navy in the 19th century, later on, there was also the Fair Isle sweater, again named after a geographical location, and it became really popular in 1921 when the Prince of Wales famously wore it and had a portrait painted of himself. Later on, the young playwright Noel Coward, for example, popularized the turtleneck sweater style, and especially these days, turtlenecks are rather popular again when worn with jackets or even suits. Between the 1920s and 70s, a lot of film and rock stars wore sweaters. Errol Flynn, Cary Grant, Michael Caine, Steve McQueen, or many, many others helped keep sweaters and different styles in fashion. If you want to learn more about the history of sweaters and more intricate details, please check out the in-depth guide on our website here. When it comes to sweater styles, here are the basics that you need to know. First up is the crew neck style, which is the original fisher neck style. It means it sits very close to your neck and protects you from the elements and it's round. While it is a very functional style, I'll personally prefer the v-neck style, which I'm wearing here right now. The advantage of the v-neck is that it's made to be worn with a collared shirt, in this case a button-down shirt, and it lends itself very much to be worn with a necktie. Because of the deep cutout, you can really see the tie versus with a crew neck, you would hardly see the tie at all. Maybe if the crew neck is cut up a little bigger, you can get up with a bow tie and that looks quite nice. But if you want to wear a necktie or a collar dress shirt, I think the V-neck should be a, your choice of sweater. If you don't care about neck wear, but you want to stay warm all day long, consider a turtleneck. They can come up with just one layer, which is not as advantageous because usually it gets a little flimsy. Um, I prefer the ones that are folded down all the way because they give your neck a nice roll. You can have problems if you have strong beard growth because the hair may poke the sweater and create a lot of pilling. That being said, the turtleneck, also known as mock neck, polo neck, or roll neck can be an elegant option that makes your outfit softer, especially if it's something like a suit or a nice jacket. I've sometimes seen people wearing it with formal evening wear, however that's wrong. And if you wanna learn more about the proper way to do it, check out our black tie guide or our white tie guide here. Another style that is less popular, but I personally like a lot, is the shawl color style. It's called that way because it's round, and when it's not quite the shawl color of a jacket, it just provides a different look. A shawl color sweater is actually a descendant from sweaters that GIs got in America. While it's great to have a heavy sweater during a cold day outside, it can be a curse once you get inside and you're just overheating. If you go from the outside to the inside a lot with lots of changes of temperature, a cardigan is your best friend because it can keep you warm when you're outside and you can unbutton it or take it off easily when you're on the inside. In recent years, the half-zip sweater has become rather popular, which usually features a sweater 
on top around your neck. Personally, I find it, it looks rather odd and I'd rather prefer toggles or buttons or a shawl collar. Another traditional style is a so-called tennis sweater, which is a white sweater with a very deep V-neck cut and it usually has colored elements around the collar area. And if you want to learn more about this interesting sweater, please check out our club cricket or tennis sweater guide here. And that's a well-known sweater type is the commando or woolly pulley, which is a very tight-fitting crew neck sweater with epaulets. It evokes some military resemblance. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of it, but if you are, go for it. The reinforced elbow patches and shoulder epaulets certainly make for a unique look. The comfort level of a sweater depends hugely on the material that is used for its yarn. One of the most popular materials, one of the most expensive ones, is cashmere because it's soft. As you know, the cashmere fiber comes from a cashmere goat. It's very fine with a diameter of usually around 14 to 6.5 microns. The longer the cashmere fibers are, the better the yarn is going to be. And the longest ones are about 36 millimeters or about 1.5 inches long. You can learn more about cashmere and the different qualities in our cashmere guide on our website here. When it comes to cashmere sweaters, you may sometimes see the name two ply, three ply, four ply, or even more plies. Basically, the number of plies tells you how many yarns were twisted together into one yarn. The advantage of doing that is the higher number, the thicker the yarn usually is, and the more resistant and consistent it is because it has simply more strands and more fiber. So an eight ply or nine ply sweater will generally be much heavier than a two-ply sweater. A very underrated material for sweaters is alpaca. It comes from Peruvian mountain animals and it's extremely soft, almost as soft as cashmere. At the same time, it's more insulating because the fiber is hollow with an air chamber that just protects you better from outside elements, especially in the winter. Another advantage is that it's elastic, that it doesn't have any lanolin, such as wool, which makes it perfect if you have allergies against lanolin. The most traditional sweater material is definitely wool. As I mentioned before, the first fishermen used wool to make their sweaters, and at the time, it was rather coarse and rough wool that felt scratchy and anything but soft on their skin. Today, sheep breeders have made great advances, and the wool diameter is sometimes as low as 15 microns, which brings it in a cashmere range. That being said, I still sometimes like sweaters that are made of a slightly rougher wool because they're usually more hard wearing. For sweaters, you'll sometimes see merino wool advertised, which usually implies it's a lower diameter and it's a specific kind. Unfortunately, it's not really a protected term and people use it arbitrarily. If you can get your hands on a fine merino wool sweater, you can get a very thin layer that is more insulating than let's say cotton, but at the same time, perfectly suited for layering during the colder days of the year. That being said, cotton and linen sweaters are still rather popular during the transitional seasons because they add exactly the warmth you need without making you sweat. Of course, both of these fibers wrinkle a little more and sometimes you'll find very open knits for even summer versions in warmer climates. Probably the majority of sweaters today is made by certain kinds of blends. So wool or cotton is either blended with nylon or polyester, or sometimes they're all made out of nylon, which is less expensive and soft, but at the same time more prone to peeling and you're also more likely to sweat in them. The big advantage is that they're less expensive, so that's why they're the number one produced sweaters today. At the same time, we believe that a quality sweater will last you for a lifetime and the cost per wear will be low and it has a low impact on the environment because you're not wasting materials and resources. Now that you know all about common sweater materials, let's discuss the fit. First of all, you want the bottom of the sweater to cover the hem at least by a little bit. If you have high-waisted trousers, you can have a shorter hem, but you can also have a longer hem. So I suggest you buy sweaters in the length so your shortest rise trouser is covered. The next element to look at is your shoulder seam. Sometimes sweaters are way too big or way too small, but the end of the seam should always sit on your shoulder bone. In terms of sleeve length, you ideally want the sweater to end at the base of your hand. Some people like to show a little bit of cuff, others prefer to show none at all. It's simply a personal choice. In the 90s, sweaters were popular that were rather baggy with a lot of excess material around your waist. Personally, I don't think it's a very flattering look because sweaters have these elements that keep them tight to your body, especially at the waist. And if you have a lot of flabbering material on top of it, it makes you look like a potato sack. Therefore, go for something that isn't overly tight and constricting, but lays close to your body. Just like with a regular suit jacket or a blazer, you want your armholes of your sweaters to be rather small and tight because 
the knit allows you to still be flexible and when you lift your arm, your entire sweater won't come up. If you have large armholes and you move up your sweater, everything is pulled up and it looks unfavorable. That being said, most people start out with plain sweaters, which are just fine. However, if you want a thicker sweater, sometimes they get those braided elements, which is very typical for an Aran sweater. On the other hand, a fair aisle sweater has very particular patterns and lots of colors that ties them all together. And it makes them very easy to combine with all kinds of jackets, such as tweed jackets or flannel jackets or any other kind of garment you would wear during the winter. If a full sweater is too much for you, I suggest you go with a sweater vest, which is basically a sweater without any sleeves. I personally love that to wear with jackets because it doesn't add any bulk to my sleeves, but it keeps me warm on my body. I suggest you go only with v-necks because then you can wear a nice tie with it, which rounds out the outfit and is a great vest or waistcoat alternative. Last but not least, let's discuss a few do's and don'ts of men's sweaters. Do store sweaters neatly folded rather than hanging because if you hang them, especially on thin hangers, they will stretch over time because the weight will pull them down and when you wear them, you will have excess material in the shoulder area that looks quite bad. Do minimize the number of dry cleanings and washings of your sweater simply because the more often you wash it, the more prematurely it will age and wear out. In order to still be able to wear your sweater, I suggest to go with undergarments such as a dress shirt, maybe a t-shirt if you want crew necks or an undershirt, but always make sure to have a layer between your sweater and your body and your sweater will last a lot longer. Do wash your sweaters according to the instruction label and make sure you take a look at it before you buy it. Some sweaters, even if they're regular merino wool sweaters, are marked as dry clean only, which means you have to go to dry cleaner every time, which can be rather costly. And if you have a modern washing machine, there's usually a soft cycle for wool and for cashmere, so you can wash them in your washing machine. Of course, that's at your own risk, but I suggest to go with things that you can wash on your own at home. It will be better because you can use the right detergent, you can be gentler, and it will save you money in the long run. Don't automatically reject an itchy sweater. Sometimes, especially old wool sweaters, can be a little more itchy, but if you wear them with an extra layer, you will likely not feel the itch. At the same time, it's very hard wearing, it will protect you well, and it will be a great companion for years to come. In my opinion, don't wear zip sweaters unless you're in a very casual environment and you really like them. Going with toggles or buttons will always look superior. Don't pull or clip loose threads on your sweater because that may lead to it coming undone completely. If you find that you have a pull in your sweater, try to pull it in all directions so the fiber can go back in. Then wash it and steam it. And if it's a natural material, it should go back in shape. Don't wear a visible t-shirt underneath your sweater because it looks rather cheap. Instead, try to go with an undershirt that has a deep enough cut that won't show your crew neck or anything underneath your sweater. Or go with a dress shirt. It's a little more dressier, but in my opinion, it's a better look. Don't wear sweaters with French cuffs or double cuffs because they're simply not made for that. Always go with a barrel cuff with buttons that is round just like the sweater. Having cufflinks with a sweater will always mean they're either covered or you see too much of the cuff and it looks sloppy. Last but not least, don't automatically toss a peeling sweater. If you have natural materials, even artificial materials, eventually with friction, you will see peeling. With a lower end sweater, you will see peeling much more quickly and frequently. And in recent years, there has been a tendency for sweaters that are softer, which oftentimes means it's a shorter fiber, but it also means you get peeling much more quickly. For example, I have a red Ralph Lauren sweater that's really old and in cotton, and it's a great quality and it hasn't peeled until now. I had newer sweaters from Ralph Lauren as well that had much more peeling after just a few times of wear, and I had to eventually toss them. In the meantime, I used a peeling cutter, but I think it should be a last resort because by doing that, you're shortening the fibers and you're just accelerating the peeling growth. So to avoid peeling, Ideally, you invest in a quality sweater with long fibers, so it will take a long time to peel, and even then, it will just be a little bit in areas where there's a lot of friction, such as underneath your arms. In today's video, I'm wearing a vintage Polo Ralph Lauren sweater that is kind of tennis sweater inspired because it has the v-neck, it has the colors, but it's a dark green, which I think is a wonderful color for fall and winter. I love the dark green color because it matches well with sand tones, with all kinds of brown tones, with blues, but it's not blue, but nevertheless, it's a dark color. It has gray, yellow, and gray accents around the collar, and it has a nice deep v-neck 
which looks particularly good when worn with a necktie. As you can see though, you can also wear it without a necktie. My shirt is a made to measure shirt, I think from an albini cloth with mother of pearl buttons and a button down collar. It's soft and it has a red and blue check. My trousers are sand colored chinos from Polo Ralph Lauren. I had them hemmed with a very tall turn up cuff because that's what I like. I'm wearing them with a pair of dark burgundy oxblood cordovan boots from Ellen Edmonds. And to spice up the look, I added some white or off-white boot laces from Ford Belvedere, which can just help to change the entire look of your boots. In order to tie it together, I'm wearing a pair of burgundy and off-white shadow striped pair of socks, but because they're boots that go above the ankle, you'll probably hardly ever see them. Now that you know all that you must know about sweaters, please check out the guide on our website for some recommended brands and more details, and sign up to our email newsletter if you wanna get videos like this right to your inbox.